Hello, it's me again, it's Nigabar, and I have really, really strange lighting, so I hope it's okay. From my camera, it does look okay, so fingers crossed it'll be fine. Um, so I'm back um, this week again with another finished object. It's really strange because I do not really, ha I don't really have this much finished objects usually, but it just happened that all of the projects I had been working on for the last year, um, I've managed to finish them quite um, on this, like over the course of like two months, I've, I've got to finish most of my makes that I've been having over the year. Uh, I think one of the reasons is because it was like the end of the year, so I really wanted to have a clean slate before going to the new year 2021 and also um, cutting on a bunch of other projects because I have been cutting on a bunch of other projects as well. I will try to uh, block a slot. I will try to dedicate a video with my recent works in progress so you can keep up with any, um, uh, so you can be up to date with what's happening on my needles. So let's go straight into my finished object of the day. So it's the Rose Cardigan by Andrea Murray. Ta da da, ta da da. <laughs> ta da. So, as you may notice, my rose cardigan is not in a faded colour. So, uh, in the original pattern, it is in a fade. So, you do have like interesting fading going on over, over the like body part. But I decided to make it into a single colour, and that's why maybe it did take a little bit longer. <laughs> I knit this for like I think three years maybe. I haven't been knit I have been knitting on it like on and off because um I have so many projects on my needles and I also had like a I had a roller coaster with this beast, let's say so. Um I I had um yeah. So I had bought the pattern because I found the I found the picture super um super pretty so i bought the pattern but i didn't really realize how it was constructed so how it's constructed is basically you have to like knit separately the four quadrants so the front left the front right oh no front yeah yeah front left front right back left back right so there's four big pieces to this garment and then you have to um, put the ribbings on and the ribbing on the bottom and also then you have to knit the collar basically mm -hmm. that's what happens but this means that since you're knitting four different quadrants, quadrants, you are seaming all of this together. Uh-huh, yeah. A lot of seaming is involved in this project. And I didn't really know that going into the project and I only discovered, like, I should have really just read ahead and there must have been, like, more information on the Ravelry product page and, uh, and patent page and stuff, but I really didn't think it through and I just saw the pattern and I was like yeah I'm on it and I bought the pattern and then as soon as I read it I was like okay <laughs> so that was on me but yeah so it does involve a lot of seaming so if seaming isn't your cup of tea I do not really recommend this pattern because you have to seam the different pieces together it's inevitable I don't think that you can fudge this to make it into or maybe you could at least do two quadrants, but I don't know if that will be, uh, that will work that well. I didn't really think it out, but yes, a lot of seeming is involved in this project. And um, I had a, I said that I had a roller coaster. I had a ride with this one. That's because I had knit one of the quadrants and then I was knitting on the second quadrant and I was being super intelligent and I was like, oh, I'm going to knit while I'm on the bus and on the, on the subway and stuff because I can, then I can, I, I, then I can like, mm, then I can be super efficient with my time. But silly me, I um, lost one of my project bags on the bus, I left it and I think I had nearly knit the whole quadrant. So that meant that I lost my needles, I had lost my interchange, one of my chiaogus that was I think the 3.5mm, so one of my most used chiaogus, I lost that and I lost the whole project and the project bag. So <laughs> yes, I wasn't really excited with that, 
But I eventually got back on the project, I knit the four quadrants and pretty much I I wasn't the fastest at finishing the four quadrants but I did eventually knit the four quadrants. So that meant that I had most of the work done but it meant that what was left was ribbon and collar. Collars because it's two piece and ribbings because there's a lot of ribbon happening. Ribbing isn't the most fun exercise on the planet, but you have a whole lot of ribbon over here. So, and the length is quite, well, yeah, it's like, it's it's a fair amount of ribbing here. So I had done all the ribbing and I was like, oh, no more ribbing in my life. But then I had to do this. And also there was another little issue. I think I knit the f the second to smallest size, but like the wrist, um, the wrist length, contour, contour, like the 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 wrist length was very very snug on me. Like the wrists were very snug on me. So I had knit the ribbing, but the ribbing was super snug, so I wasn't like, I was a little bit on the fence and I I just left it half done and I had finished one of, like, I finished one of the sleeves, but the bind off was also too snug and stuff, so, so in general everything was not good, but I couldn't bother with it, so everything, it was just halfway done and then I was like, let's try to finish the collar and that took me some, six months. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't really enjoy knitting like very um, short but super long knitted pieces. And especially when you think about seaming all of this at the by the end of it, it's not really that enticing, is it? Or maybe it's just me. But this took me ages to get motivated. But the funny thing is that... Um, once I forced myself to do it, like I think I knit one of the collars in like what two days, three days. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not a big of a deal, but it's just like the mental space to get in the collar space and finish it, and then you have to sew all that up again. <laughs> so yes, eventually I finished the collar, but also I had really had a hard time figure out figuring out the right ratio to stick this collar and this body part together because at first it was like um there was too much flaring and then I tried to do another ratio and then it was all scrunching up so like there was a whole big like I spent one day figuring out this ratio because I would like seam it together and then it wasn't working so I had to rip it out then I had to seam it together, rip it out, seam it out, no 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 I think I've done it like eight times or something but once I fi- oopsies <laughs> once I figured out one of the sides the second side went faster and also yeah the, generally the second fast, the second side went faster and you just like I would join everything in the back and seam everything back together and all but I um, fudged that because I didn't really notice this but I only noticed this once I like a after I washed it and I was um, weaving in the ends actually my centre back doesn't match what the fuck so you can see that this is my centre back for the body and this is my centre back for the collar doesn't match. Like, what did I do? Like, I must have seen that. Uh, no, I did not bother to match the centres. Like, what on earth are you doing? So, um, when I was weaving the end, I was like, oh, I'll have to, like, unpick the collar and then re-seam this together. It won't be bigger. It won't be that big of a deal. But no, 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 no. I didn't do that because I realised that the thread I used to like so the collar in to the body piece was like it wasn't a it wasn't a thread that I was going to risk cutting because it was like one of the pieces of yarn that was holding everything together so I just decided that I'm just gonna let that I'm just going to let it like that leave it like that and Nobody's gonna see it. 
it's in the back of the neck and seriously um, nobody's going to know except me and if I have my hair like this nobody is going to know in uh, including me <laughs> and I'm not going to see it because it's at the back of my neck so we're not going to care about it so that's just a little cafe regarding this um, regarding this make and then um, I also made a little modification in the sleeve so you can see there's a little hole here and this is intentional so these ribbing are super long on the sleeves and to start with this is a super oversized sweater I should say so generally the the there's a lot of positive ease in the body area but you can see that the sleeves become very snug yeah this is the sleeves are snug <laughs> but uh, that had nothing to do with the oversized stuff but um so um it's oversized it's already oversized but it also has a, l a very long ribbing very long cuff and this means that if I wear it with these cuffs, I would just have these cuffs around my fingers like this, or around my. I would, uh, so this means that I would have these cuffs around my fingers like this all the time, and um, yeah. So I thought that, like, actually, to be honest, my friend suggested that if you wear them like these, why just why not just make a little hole for your thumb so it looks like sleevesless mittens genius so i just um fudged fudged this and made a hole um in between the knit stitches of the ribbon can you see this yeah. like this and so you can just slide your thumb in and enjoy the coziness of this sweater and I really like this and I think it's super cozy and I think it'll be super handy and I'll actually be wearing these with my thumbs out like this more often but if I don't want to wear them wear the cardigan like fingerless mitts I can just like wear them the regular style without any problem so it's super cool. I'm really pleased with this modification. It was like literally nothing at all, but it does make a little difference in the daily wear, the daily life or the lifespan of this sweater. So yay. So I'm finally done with this sweater and I think that I'll be wearing it quite often because it's very cozy and it's also very versatile since it's not too like it's not tight overall on the cardigans that's one of the issues I do have with some of the cardigans I've knit when the sleeves are too tight like overall it's very hard to wear anything underneath it um contrary to like this Royce cardigan like even though if even though the cuffs are quite snug generally speaking there's a lot of like positive ease like in the arm area, everywhere, so it means that you can wear basically anything underneath and you can wear this over over it, so it's very versatile and it means that it will be having a lot of love and a lot of wear and I love this colour. So the yarn I've used is a Angora Blend yarn and it's this um, vintage red it's not a bright vibrant red but it's a very toned down of a vintage red and really like this color and it also has like a very um unique hair fluff color and i think that's me that's what makes this um yarn so unique and precious so i'm finally done with this rose cardigan and i'm very pleased and um Yep, but I don't think I'll be knitting another one. There's just too much seaming and it was a very long project <laughs> to finish. But I am happy to have it done and yeah, I'm really glad to have this garment join my wardrobe. I hope you really like this video. What do you think about the cardigan? Like, do 
Um, have you already knit the rice cardigan or are you planning on knitting one? Are you knitting one? What do you think about what do, what are your general opinions about this one? And how do you feel about seaming? I don't personally I don't really mind seaming, but when it's this this much, it does intimidate me a little bit. Um, I would prefer having less seaming. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I hope you really liked this video, um, don't hesitate to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you do like my content, I am trying to keep up with the English videos so that you don't get bored with all my Korean videos. <laughs> but yes, if you, do, if you do enjoy my content, feel free to check out my Ko-fi account, it does mean a lot and it does really make a big difference to keep up with this channel. Thank you very much and I hope you have a wonderful, lovely knitting time and see you next time.